Hello everyone and welcome to another game of World of Warships. Today's replay is from Sulf and he is in the Neptune, the tier 9 British cruiser. He is on the map hotspot in a 3 point domination game mode. It's a tier 9 battle with few tier 9s, no carriers and not so many destroyers. Now this replay is actually an older one, it's from the last patch. I've had this lying around for a while and I never came around to using it until today. So Sulf has sent me quite a few other replays in the past and I have featured him before. But this game is... it's not that long but it's, it's fun and it's uh, amazing to watch. So it's about time that I'm using it. Now here in the beginning he is moving towards point alpha. We have a destroyer who is coming in here as well. And Sulf is firing some blind torpedoes here. I'm not sure if an enemy destroyer could be fast enough to actually sail into those. But, I mean, why not? The torpedoes should be reloaded by the time he might be using them. Oh, it looks like the enemy destroyer is going for point alpha. And the friendly destroyer is almost there as well. Now you can use these islands here as cover. And obviously a Neptune has hydroacoustic surge, so he might be able to achieve something if he just goes close to this island and tries to make the enemy destroyer retreat. On the other side of the map it seems like that one destroyer is trying to fight for Point Charlie, but all his support is going away, so I don't have much hopes for the other side of the map. And here we can see the first torpedoes coming in. We can see the smoke, so the enemy destroyer is moving in. And Sulf is popping Hydro. This destroyer is... well... He was a bit too brave, I guess. So that's one destroyer dealt with. We know the other enemy destroyer is on the other side of the map, so that's great news which leaves just a bunch of cruisers and battleships here. And those... I mean, the enemy team can sit on the other side of the island and prevent the capture, and that's exactly what they are doing. And the enemy is also using hydroacoustic search, so they are here spotting each other. What Sylph can do once these torpedoes are out of the way, and if he is detected, unfortunately there is a plane detecting him and all enemies are aiming at him, so he can't just sail out there. What he wants to do is sail a little bit forward, deploy his smoke and unleash his guns and maybe torpedoes. Now he got rid of the plane, so he should be undetected. The smoke might also provide a little bit of cover, but you don't want to risk it. So he is using his smoke now, that leaves him a very small window where he can poke out and use his guns. The downside of that is, of course, the enemies might return fire because, let, let's face it, there is much... They don't have to guess very hard to see where he is in the smoke, but oh my, lot of lot of enemy cruisers sitting there showing broadside. And this is just like Christmas. Now his rear guns are, well, pounding the mountain, but that's not much of a problem. The front guns are more than enough to inflict some serious hurt at those enemies. And very soon that cruiser is going down. Now he did take some return fire, but not an awful lot so far. And well, they're out of cruisers, but there are still some tasty battleships to shoot at. Now here comes a problem. That's the Bismarck. The Bismarck is a problem because the Bismarck has Hydro. And we can see here the Bismarck is using Hydro, so Sulf is detected, he is reversing, he needs to get back in cover fast, otherwise he gets pounded by those battleships. Now, the problem with this, those torpedoes is that obviously the Bismarck is spotting them as well. And there is a friendly Edinburgh here who I think is deploying smoke, but... Well isn't much use against the Hydro, so they have to take care of the Bismarck. He did get two torpedo hits on the Bismarck. I mean, seeing those torpedoes and avoiding them, they are still a different matter. 
And yeah, torpedoes are probably the fastest way to get this Bismarck down, especially considering that there are quite a few ships here with torpedoes. So the, tor the Bismarck will see those torpedoes come. But uh, the <laughs> if you have enough torpedoes, that doesn't matter all that much. This Bismarck is getting pretty close and the Bismarck has a lot of targets to choose from. Looks like he might be focusing the destroyer. But with combined effort, I mean when you look at that, there are also two battleships here in the back. So basically there are five friendly ships here who were focusing that Bismarck. So that Bismarck's charge was pretty doomed here. Anyway. And I mean, it's, it's the friendly... Uh, the enemy team is just getting destroyed here. The enemies might have succeeded in taking point Charlie, and nobody is caring for the center, but here at point Alpha, the friendly team is just kicking ass. So, Zulf is again in his smoke. He is unleashing some torpedoes towards the Colorado, and he is using his guns at the Scharnhorst. And obviously there are quite a few friendly ships here who are all firing at those enemies. The Charnhorst might be decently angled, but considering how many enemies he is facing, that doesn't matter. And we can see some okay hits here from the armor piercing, even though the Charnhorst is angled. If you consider the rate of fire here, he is doing quite significant damage. And, well, the Scharnhorst is trying to reverse out of here, but there is nowhere to go. This Scharnhorst is going down. And, well, Scharnhorst isn't the only one. So, Colorado got hit by a torpedo or two and sunk bloody. That's a double strike. Um, not, not bad for this short amount of time. The battle was fought here. Uh, six enemy ships sunk, a double strike, a crack, and a confederate, and a first blood. Yeah, yeah, I think that was uh, successful. So, this cap is theirs now. There are almost no enemy ships remaining. And he can now move towards the center. There is a destroyer here. With... Getting focused by way too many ships. Oh, I'm um, not sure if the destroyer will... No. Somebody got him. Well, that leaves two enemies. Now we can see one here is at Point Charlie, and the other one is actually here behind at the zone wall. You can... By the way, if you don't know this, these are the last spotted positions on the minimap. You can activate them. There is a minimap menu, just in case you didn't know. Because, well, it's a bit weird that this is in-game, I guess. If you click on those... Well, on this button. Uh, you have several options. You can activate how far you use yourself or spot it. Um, by sea, by air. You can show us known positions. And I'd recommend you activate those things. Because they, well, they help. So, Sulf. So probably realized the same thing. The one cruiser that we don't know where he exactly is, is somewhere in that direction, so he's turning around. There is really no reason for him to change this cruiser on the other side of the map, because, well, his team will get there before him. Or the game might be won before he reaches anything. So he turned around, he realized there was an enemy, and he found the Ibuki. Now, at this point, I mean, it's just uh, getting some more damage done before the game's over and maybe going for his high caliber so the Ibuki is nice enough to show broadside this probably means the Ibuki is using torpedoes and well Sulf is deploying his smoke here but I'm afraid he was the only one spotting and finally he gets some citadels he gets his high caliber and he's using his hydro, he is aware that there are torpedoes coming this way. And here they are. But thanks to the hydro, he should be able to dodge them without a problem. And the Ibuki is almost down. Oh, looks like...
looks like the Ibuki is coming around the other side of the island and he is prepared. If the Ibuki here comes around sailing broadside, this should be a swift end. And the seventh kill. So, well, the bandit team is still chasing down the last enemy cruiser, but nothing of interest is happening here anymore. So, I think we can just skip to the post battle results. This is obviously a win. Now let's take a look at the results and I'm sorry that the screen is cut off here on the right side, nothing I can do about that, but see all the relevant information. Now Sulf managed to get 2591 base experience and yeah, he certainly played this very well. And he had support from his team, but together they just uh, defended Cap heroically, or I guess they assaulted it, however you want to put it. And it, it was a slot. But it was a slaughter that's very fun to watch, at least in my opinion. Oh, Sulf earned himself Confederate, First Blood, Double Strike, Kraken, and High Caliber. He scored 180,000 points of damage, and yeah, I found this very amusing. I hope you did as well, and I'll see you guys next time.